Question is from the Maple Leaf Man. What is the line concerning your relationships with your clients? How close do you think you can get with them before it gets crossed? Oh, this is an interesting This is a good question because uh, as a trainer, when you're training someone, you know, consider this. Let's say you do a good job. Let's say you're a really good trainer. I have a strong opinion. You're going to be, yeah, yeah, I think we all do. If if you're a good trainer, you're going to be seeing a client for between one to three hours a week, every single week undivided one-on-one attention for potentially years. Um, Mm -hmm. Towards the end of my career, I had all my clients were with me for over five years. Many of them were with me for over 10 years. I had clients that were with me for 13 years, same time, same day, Mm -hmm. week in and week out. I would see these people. Now think about that. That's hours of undivided attention every week Um, for years. They probably see you more uh, often and consistently than they do most of their friends and family. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's just undivided. It's like imagine meeting with a friend two hours every well, week. Well, imagine lunch. what's happened to us. Yeah, I mean we talk about this all the time. Just in the four years time that we've been together, yeah, I feel I, like we've been best friends for. Yeah, you guys, I think you have surpassed my friends that I've known for twenty five years as far as know what you know about me. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. we just do it undivided so, attention. For and the hours. reason why I don't that's talk so- to my other friends like this. Yeah, <laughs> this is all new to me. You just punch each other. Noogies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, and and so now here you are. You're a good trainer. You're doing a good job. So clients want to see you consistently. You see them for years. You're going to get close to them. There's there's no there's no way around it. You're going to know about their families. You're going to know about their days. You're going to know each other's personalities. So that's going to happen no matter what. Um, but I do think it's important that you always remember that you, they hired you. They're paying you to be their trainer. So there should always be a level of professionalism or that line there that you always maintain. And really it's a line of integrity. It's not because Mm -hmm. now, sure, this goes without saying it's smart. You don't want to go too far with a client because weird stuff could happen. It could feel awkward, whatever. No, this is about integrity. They're hiring you. And because this is what I've seen happen. I've seen clients with trainers, trainers train them for years and the quality of the training just declines over the years Mm -hmm. because the trainer starts looking at them like it's my buddy. Oh, it's my buddy coming in and the training quality goes down. Then the client feels weird Telling their, their buddy, hey, I think the way you're training me isn't as good as it used to be, or hey, I don't know if I want to train with you anymore because yeah. it's, a, and it becomes this weird thing. Always remember they hired you, you're the professional, maintain that integrity, and then I think you're going to be okay. And this goes, of course, goes without saying, don't sleep with your clients, don't fucking, you know, yeah. don't do shit with your clients. Everybody that, can tell. Yes, everybody knows. Yeah, the body language says everything. <laughs> yes. I yeah. feel even stronger about this. Um, and I, maybe that's because most of my career I managed trainers. And so I was constantly having this conversation. And I am not a fan of you hanging out with your clients at all. Mm-hmm. At all. And you, I agree with Sal. You're going to become very close to these people because you spend hours and hours and potentially years and years with them. But it's a, a quick way to have a really hard time retaining the business when you become really close to them. Imagine your best friend who does something that a service that that you want, like and then him charging you all the time at one point you finally look at him like hey we're friends did you do this yeah. i do that yeah. how about i help you out you help me out and we just we're friends it turns that happens into, more often than that yeah. almost always happens yeah. it's it's almost inevitable so i do do not like hanging out with clients outside of of the gym and uh, us meeting for professionally now uh, I've maintained relationship, many relationships beyond contracts. Like, you know, you were a client of mine for two years. You've got all the results. You, you're on with your life and doing something else, or maybe you lose your job, or you transfer, you move, and we still stay in contact. I've got many of those clients that I trained uh, two decades ago, mm-hmm. and we still talk to each other because I really like them as a person, and we're friends now. But during the time that we were in a contract with each other and we were doing business, it was business, and I and I, and I maintain that. Aside from whatever other reasons too, because you start going out drinking with them and having Sunday fun day with them, and mm-hmm. and that absolutely can lead to issues or some really fucking pro- major problems. Which I've had trainers do this, and I've seen it a million times. But even just from just purely business, it, it's really hard to ask for the resign 
when you've gotten on a very close friend level outside of the gym. If it's professional all the time and you're just seeing them in the gym and you're it's time to renew and contract. Plus, I also think when they when they like you that much and they love spending their time with you that much and the only time they get is the time that they're paying. Oh yeah. A lot of times clients it more valuable. I had many clients that I know damn well that they could have went on on their own and continued training without oh, yeah. me. Yeah, after yeah. 5 years of consistent training, you know, do they need to train with you? Right, but they renew because yeah. they value that hour that they get with me. Absolutely. And I'm okay with yeah. that. It's know? also it also it also can get really weird in this sense like you start to lose your effectiveness as a trainer. Okay, let me let me explain it this way. How hard is it for you to train a good friend of yours that you've known for for years or a spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Right. It's difficult because they know you on a different level. When someone hires you, you're the professional, you're the trainer. Once you guys, if you start to get super, super close, now it's like, okay, I know you as trainer, Sal, but now we're going out and hanging out. You know me as regular guy, Sal. I'm, I'm going to lose my influence over you. I'm going to lose... My ability to help you as a trainer, because now you're just you're just you're viewing me just as your friend, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if it is, if you want to maintain your integrity as an effective trainer, if you want to maintain your integrity as an effective trainer, you have to always be that person. You know, I trained Doug for a couple years before we went into business, and that's not a super long time. I mean, I mean, under personal training standards, it's a long time. But I had clients who were with me for for much longer. But I trained him consistently. Two to three days a week, week in, week out, for two years before we ever went into business with each other. And he knew, and it's funny, he commented on this uh, several times. Like I had no idea the other side of you. I the view, the vision, the vision, the version of me that he saw day in and day out was the integrity, personal training, Sal, personal trainer, Sal. And I he still he sees glimpses of the other side of me, but I always maintain that. Once we got to, and it doesn't mean that I was a, I'm a bad guy. He's just. I, I maintain that level of professionalism. I think it's it's super important if you want to be effective, um, and you want to be uh, you know if you want to be a good trainer, Don't maintain you, that integrity. Yeah, it's funny because I mentioned uh, like how Courtney and I met, and it's always like kind of a joke because I'm like. I always pride myself on being like super professional. If like, you cross that fucking line, you better be ready to marry her. That's it. <laughs> yeah, he that's did. it. That's, that's what happened. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, say, but you, you cross that line, you better be then, ready to marry her. I, I, I was like, I did not cross that line. It, it, yes, there was flirting. And yes, there was, you know, like hints of like what was to come in terms of like what my <laughs> in, intentions. But I would have loved, I wish. I could see the flirting that happened between uh, you. Was, I remember it. I it, remember it was aggressive when he, on my I end. knew. I knew the yeah. first session, dude. I'm yeah. like, this is his type of girl, dude. Hundred uh, yeah. percent. Hundred yeah, percent. It was on, dude. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I checked myself. Like I got. <laughs> we built up to a point where it was on that level. Where it was okay. Like I, like we're like friend too friendly, and like I keep trying to like you know use this to to go outside of work. And I'm, I have to get. I have to cut this and and and, and pass it along to mm -hmm. another qualified trainer and. Uh, anyways, but that was a career decision for me. Like I could have easily have just like, you know, used uh, that time to kind of like keep yeah. spitting my game and, and, and trying to make my way into, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, status at that point. I know a lot of trainers, I saw it firsthand. Like, I'm like, okay, this is, this is a problem over here and it's already developing right in front of everybody's yeah. eyes. And the, the, the problem with that is that everybody, you don't realize how many people watch and see shit. And everybody everybody knows, yeah. you know, and then that becomes a reputation that you carry with yeah. you trying to gain other clients you know now now you're hindering your business on that level yeah. totally totally yeah. and as a trainer you're going to get flirted with this right. just comes with the territory you need to learn how to harness that yeah and, and use the resign yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes Take terrible advice yeah. don't <laughs> don't shit where you eat yeah. Yeah. oh my god yeah. 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 terrible that's, that's advice good one. absolutely yeah i like that